Welcome to another episode of uh, my very new channel. Today I'm going to be out here testing the uh, Fuji X-H2S and my recently purchased, it's only two days old and uh, this will be the first time I use it, the uh, Fujifilm 150mm to 600mm f8 lens. I'm looking forward to testing this lens and this uh, camera combination. It's the best that Fuji has to offer right now. So I made a difficult choice. I went ahead and sold my 100 to 400 uh, millimeter Fuji lens to help fund the uh, purchase of this 150 to 600 millimeter Fuji lens. One brief uh, things that I can say about the lens right now, it, it does feel very, very light. It's, it's amazing to think that you have this kind of quality and something that feels that light. I am concerned about the f8 aperture in order for you to get the uh, 600 600 millimeter range on there this is what it had to be and to keep it light and to keep it affordable I'm sure it's a bright sunny day right now here in South Florida and uh, you know hopefully I can keep that eye so where uh, where the noise won't be too big of an issue and and if it is it's part of the test I'd like to see how well the uh, how good the noise is on the Fuji XH2S uh, okay so a couple of quick uh, thoughts already on the uh, Fuji X-H2S using the uh, Fuji XF 150 to 600 millimeter lens. One thing I love about the Fuji X-H2S is the shutter sound. It's just gorgeous. It's got the most beautiful shutter sound uh, that I've heard of any camera yet. I just got an opportunity to take photos of the lion and uh, the lion was in a shaded area pretty much and I did have to bump up the ISO. Uh, the first uh, 17 or so shots that I took, uh, I was actually selecting the focus box and placing it on the eye of the lion. And then I went ahead and, and switched over to face detect with eye detect for animals. And uh, man, that box, uh, at times two boxes were getting right on the face of the lion and, and tracking the eye. Uh, still have to see the photos uh, to see if they came out sharp, but at least the uh, camera is telling me that it is definitely tracking it. The lens is uh, super light, very uh, comfortable to handhold. I, I, uh, I have the tripod shoe on there, but uh, I haven't mounted on a tripod yet and I'm shooting handheld uh, for all these photos of the lions thus far and uh, the, the, the lens is, it doesn't even feel like front heavy, it's kind of interesting. I, I actually think it feels uh, more comfortable in the hand than the 1-400 to did but uh, you know, I just got it and uh, this is uh, my initial thoughts. Just got an excellent opportunity to photograph the uh, African painted dog. The thing that made that uh, opportunity so good is the fact that the African painted dogs, they love to run around and chase each other. Test the autofocus tracking. I was able to put on animal uh, face detect autofocus tracking and the box seemed to do a pretty good job. There's times it would change uh, in size depending on whether it could catch the eye or not. But uh, I mean, as far as looking through the viewfinder, uh, it seemed to be performing well. I did have to bump up the ISO as much as 10,000 ISO because of the fact that they're in a shaded exhibit. But the exhibit gets a little complicated because it's not just shaded. There's also a lot of uh, spots where there's uh, light coming in and, and uh, you can get into some pretty complicated exposures. Also, the fact that uh, sometimes they're shaded and it's very exposed behind them. So it, it was a challenge in that sense. Uh, I don't know that it's necessarily the best autofocus test uh, as far as focus tracking is concerned, but it's it's a good test and uh, it's a, a hard one because of the fact that there's a, the, the contrast that you're dealing with in the background and the fact that they're coming in and out of a shaded and highlighted areas. So that would definitely be a challenge for the autofocus and it'll, I'm curious to see how that performed and I'm also curious to see uh, the ISO, how well that performs. Uh, when I left that exhibit, uh, there was a small bird uh, that I saw a good opportunity to get some photos of, but I was set to the animal face detect autofocus not the bird but uh, the box seemed to be getting on the bird just fine uh, I did program one of the buttons on the camera where I can go ahead and uh, hit it and turn off face detect autofocus so after I shot the initial photos with the animal face uh, tracking uh, turned on I went ahead and turned off the uh, the autofocus tracking as far as face for animals uh, because I was taking photos of a bird and uh, you know it, it performed well I was putting the box on the face of the bird and uh, tracking it that way and, and taking my photos that way. And then uh, the bird was there long enough where I was able to go into my Q button and go to the uh, bird autofocus uh, tracking. And uh, it performed very well as far as the box following the bird's face. Got to see if the pictures came out in focus. But uh, the box is telling you, hey, I'm getting on there and you're going to get a focus photograph. We got to see if uh, it actually turned out that way. Uh, regarding high ISOs, you know, even when I was photographing a chimpanzee and, and he was actually in a, a well-lit area, 
but uh, he's still shaded compared to what the background looked like. And it's a black animal with black eyes. And uh, I had to raise the eyes so even for that. So the, the F8 is gonna be uh, a challenge uh, when you're shooting uh, animals, even in uh, bright sunny days like it is right here in uh, Florida today. If the animal's in the shade and if the animal's uh, dark uh, fur, uh, you're going to have quite a challenge and you're going to have to hope uh, that these ISOs uh, are very impressive and uh, also, you know, there's great software out there like uh, Topaz Denoise and, and hopefully that will help if uh, necessary. Uh, when photographing the gazelle, there was one time there and uh, I don't blame the uh, Fuji system and, and I still have to see what the results are, but uh, most cameras will, will be challenged uh, when it's bright behind an animal and the gazelle is a, a, a tan uh, fur so it's it's not a, a very contrasty so the autofocus got challenged a little bit trying to focus uh, a few times on the gazelle I don't think it was anything to be concerned about by any means and I don't think it's uh, uh, that that is something that wouldn't happen to any other autofocus system as far as what it looks like through the viewfinder and using the camera and lens combination with the uh, Fuji X-H2S uh, it looks very snappy, very impressive, but I'm not concerned about how quickly the, the lens and camera combination acquire autofocus. It actually seems very impressive to me. So I kind of have my head resting against the lens for a moment there, and I hear this little whiny noise, and I'm like, oh, man, I think that's a stabilizer. So, I mean, I, you have to go looking to hear the stabilizer to actually hear the image stabilizer. So very impressive. It's very quiet. Uh, I am disappointed that there's not a button on the uh, lens for stabilizer. Uh, that means you're probably going to have to dedicate uh, a button on the camera to turning on and off the image stabilizer, which, you know, I wish it was in that way because that's another button that you're giving up to something that would have been on a lens. So I, I think, I don't understand why Fuji did this, but uh, it seems to be uh, something that I think maybe a lot of manufacturers, not just Fuji, may be doing going forward. The one thing I notice is I do have this stabilizer where it's turned on uh, continuously, like when you're... Uh, using the camera and when I let go of the shutter button is uh, I was still hearing the stabilizer working inside the lens and it did turn off after a while uh, from my not pressing the shutter button so just keep in mind that uh, that stabilizer is going to be running for a little bit and uh, probably running down your batteries uh, perhaps maybe I should just do it uh, while shooting uh, but it helps when you're shooting at 900 millimeters to have image stabilizer on it's hard enough to to look through that frame so tight and, and uh, if you have a viewfinder that's bouncing around. I just got a great opportunity to do some photography of some ducks in the, the pond here. Uh, they were flapping their wings and uh, moving around pretty quick. This time uh, the ISO is about 800 and the uh, shutter speed was somewhere around the 1250 range and the aperture was uh, between f7 and f8. The camera does a great job of putting the box uh, on the on the duck. It's almost like a like a vertical box uh, that it puts on there many times when it can't find the eyes, but at times it would find the face or the eyes and uh, it would focus that way. It's still what I would consider a challenging uh, opportunity or a challenging photo to take because yeah, of the fact that the duck is moving very fast with uh, water splashing all over the place and, and that could uh, uh, interfere with the autofocus system of the camera. But uh, if it performed with this, then that's a very impressive uh, outcome for the uh, Fuji. XH2S along with the 150 to 600 millimeter lens. A couple of quick thoughts regarding the uh, 150 to 600 millimeter Fuji lens. It actually feels much more comfortable in the hand and carrying it than the uh, Sony 200 to 600 millimeter. I don't know at this moment uh, the size and weight comparisons, but uh, you would think that they're uh, pretty close in length and perhaps in weight. I think this is somewhere in the three pound range. But uh, anyways, I mean, it. it it actually has felt, uh, you know, no worse than carrying like a one to 400 millimeter lens. It's, it's definitely a lens that you can handhold all day long and, and really not have it bother you hanging around your shoulder. Sometimes you don't realize that F8, uh, what an issue is going to be. I, I know that 5.6 with the 100 to 400 millimeter lenses is an issue. Talking F8 uh, just uh, complicates things a little bit further. It's very hard. You'd be surprised when you go out to places that it, you know it's, it's a bright shiny day and it doesn't matter because you know animals are going to gravitate towards being in the shade so you know that complicates things and you end up with a, 
overexposed backgrounds to try to expose the animal correctly especially if it's a black animal that uh, makes it even more challenging my understanding is so far that the ISO on this uh, the Fuji X-H2S is uh, exactly the same as it was on previous uh, Fuji X-T4 or X-T3 cameras even though there's a new processor in there I will say that I've owned several Canon uh, 70s and uh, never liked the uh, the high ISO performance with that camera and I did have an opportunity when I shot with the Fuji X-T4 or the X-T3s to compare the the image quality of the uh, Fuji system compared to the Canon uh, 7D and I mean the 7D was just awful I, I just never liked that camera for image quality and especially if you compare it to the uh, Fuji. My biggest concern is actually being able to get a shutter speed fast enough to, st to stop fast moving subjects. Even in, for sports, you get into a sporting event that starts at four o'clock in the afternoon, you're gonna have a problem. You might be okay at four in the afternoon, but as that uh, sporting event progresses, you know, and the light's going down, you know, f fate's not gonna cut it. As far as the, uh, using the lens so far, first impressions, very initial impressions at that. Uh, I'm enjoying how easy it is to move the zoom ring. I like the, the throw on it. There's not a lot of uh, turning that you have to do to go from uh, from the widest end, which would be 150, to the 600 uh, millimeter range. So I find it quite comfortable. It's something I can do pretty much with my uh, index finger and, and uh, thumb and I can uh, rotate the ring uh, quite easily and smoothly at that. So this wraps up uh, my photography here today at the zoo. Photographing with the Fuji X-H2S and the 150-600mm uh, to 600 millimeter lens. Okay, thank you all for watching the video and uh, please like and subscribe.